I'm going to talk to you about echo units and digital delays and I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know about digital delays and echoes and delays. Different types, the controls, the usage, just loads of good info about delays. So let's talk a bit about history. Let's talk about the first type of echoes. Before they had electronic delays, they had to find a different way around it. So one of the coolest echoes I've ever seen was in BBC Made Avail Studios in London. And they've actually got a room in the Radiophonics workshops called Echo Room. So I was like, what's that? What's that room for? And apparently in the olden days, they would feed the signal down a lead into this room that had a speaker in. They'd play the sound back through the speaker and they'd have a microphone at the other end of the room and they would record the actual echo sound of the room in the days before electronic delays. So you'd actually get a delay simply by the signal travelling through the air and being re-recorded milliseconds later. Of course, you couldn't have a very long delay. You're talking like slapback delays, short delays. But that was how it used to be done. Then came the tape echo. Now, tapes actually work by having a read and write head and a magnetic tape that records the sound onto the tape. So as you record a sound onto the tape, like a guitar, for instance, back it would read as it passes, just like a CD head reads a CD. So you'd have a loop of tape. So if you put a chord on the guitar down, for instance, as it plays, bah, bah, the motor speed would actually set the delay time. So if you wanted a quick delay, you'd speed the motor up, bah, 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 or a slow delay, bah, but, so that was actually how tape delays worked. I used to have a valve tape echo that had a really great gritty sound to it. But the thing about the old tape echoes is that they had a bit of a restricted frequency range. They were quite muddy and dirty. But that was the character of the tape echoes. And that's what gave them their sound. Then in the early 70s came analog delays. And in the late 70s came digital delays. On the analog delays, they only play sort of the last note back that you put in. On the digital delay, the quality became that much better. So it would play back the same notes that you play in and it sounded accurate for the first time. So digital delays were big breakthrough. It really comes down to personal taste and what you like. Some people like tape delays, some like analog, some like digitals. Every single delay has a different tone and different characteristics. So it's really about finding the right tone for your own use that you like. I use various delays for various jobs because as I say, they've all got different tones. So they've all got their place in production and making sounds unique. I've explained about natural rooms. I've talked about tape echoes, analog and digital delays. There's another type of delay called a multi-tap delay. Now a multi-tap, instead of just having one set delay time, one set time control set in milliseconds, with a multi-tap delay, you can set each repeat has its own delay time. So I've got a boss rack here with a multi-tap delay on and I'll just demonstrate to you on this. So I've got multi-tap four here. That means it's got four separate delay times. One for the first repeat, one for the second, one for the third, one for the fourth. So as you can see, there's the first delay time, there's the second delay time, the third and the fourth. There's a set feedback. There's also individual volumes and pans for each of the taps. You can get up to sort of multi-tap sixes, multi-tap sevens. There's also something called a tap tempo delay, which just basically has a button that you tap to the speed that you want the delay to be in. That's fairly self-explanatory. Also, on my Echo Boy, there's also something that's very similar to a multi-tap delay, and that's a rhythmic delay. So you can have a preset rhythm. It isn't something I used much, multi-tap delays and rhythmic delays, but they've all got their uses and they've all got their certain jobs that they're good at. I've got a superb plug-in, it's called Echo Boy, it's made by a company called Sound Toys and it's got about 15 different emulations of old-fashioned echoes on it. I'll come on to the controls next. 
I'm going to record some reggae chops in now and I'm going to demonstrate to you some of the different tones and different characteristics of the different delays on my sound tools echo. So I'm going to start with um, about 318 milliseconds and 50% feedback. So here we go. So like the tape echoes and the memory man, some of the different settings just so you can hear how the delays colour the sound. So let's start with the studio tape echo. I've got 50% feedback or about 318 milliseconds. So that's the studio tape. It all just sounds slightly different. The echoplex. It's a bit more trebly. Tube tape echo. Cheap tape echo. That's a bit grittier. Road and space echo. It's a bit muffly. So they've all got their different tones. Transmitter. That's really grainy. So let's put the feedback up and you can get some crazy sounds going. Boss DM2. So it's really versatile. Echoes can really create a really big soundscape and a really different tone depending on what type of echo you use. Another good thing about Sound Toys Echo is it's got saturation on so it can emulate those tape echoes. So we've got a really comprehensive range of different types of delay and they all sound different. So very flexible. Echo pedals can come in so many different shapes and sizes and the thing is they all have their own individual sounds and character. So it really is just about personal taste. So let's talk about controls now. All echoes have the same controls. The most important control being the actual delay time, which sets the time in milliseconds of the echo that you're gonna use. Now I'm gonna show you on my boss rack. I've got a simple echo selected. Now if I scroll through the parameters, you can see that there's a delay time. That sets the timing of the actual echo. And that's something that's in common with all echo units. That's one of the most important settings on all delays. Because it's a simple delay, there's only one. If I was to select a stereo echo or a dual delay, you quite often get two different times, a left time and a right time. And also a left and right feedback control left and right pans and volumes too. Now a ping pong delay is an automatic stereo delay which goes left with the first repeat, right with the second, left with the next repeat, right with the second. So that's what a ping pong is. The second control which is really important is the feedback control or the repeat. And this controls how many repeats the delay does. So with the feedback off on a really good delay, you should only get one repeat. And then as you move the feedback right up to 8, 9, 10, 90%, it should really start going crazy and it should repeat and repeat. Because what the feedback does, it feeds the output of the echo back into the input. And that's what the definition of feedback is. Another very common control on a good echo unit is a high or low pass filter, or sometimes known as a high cut or low cut, or sometimes known as a tone control. And what these do, if you've got a low pass or the high cut selected, what it does, it cuts the treble off so the echo will get more bassy. And likewise, if you use a low cut or a high pass filter, what it does is it'll roll the bass off so the echo will get more trebly. So you can see on the boss rack here, it's got like a parametric filter. They're all just variations of the same controls. And these help to emulate sort of tape echoes because obviously they used to sound more crunchy or more woolly as the repeats went on. So that's where your tone controls can come in to emulating those sounds on your delay pedal. 
Another important control that you find on the delay is the mix control, and this simply mixes between the dry signal and the effect signal, known as the wet, so you can balance between your instrument and the amount of effects that you're using. Echo pedals can come in so many different shapes and sizes and the thing is they all have their own individual sounds and character so it really is just about personal taste. Another really important control that you find on delay units is the mix control and this simply mixes between the dry signal and the effect signal known as the wet so you can balance between your instrument and the amount of effects you're using. On more advanced delays, you can get tempo options and sync options. So if you're working on a sequencer, it'll automatically sync to the tempo you're working at. You can select quarter notes, half notes, sixteenths, or triplets, or dots. I personally prefer to work in time in seconds because it's more versatile. Sometimes just by moving the time knob, you might accidentally find something that works really well. Of course, I do use beat delays at times, but there's less chance in getting those happy accidents happen, so to speak. So it's always good to fish around with the delay time. So that just about covers all the controls. I think the thing to do is demonstrate some echoes with some guitars, and I'll demonstrate some echoes on, on some vocals, and then finally I'll do some echoes on some drums for you, so you get a feel of how they can be used. So let's start with the guitar first. Okay, I've talked about history of delays. I've demonstrated some different tones. Uh, I've talked about the controls. Now I'm just gonna demonstrate to you some practical guitar uses of delays. Now there's a classic concert recorded for television by Queen in 1975 at the Hammersmith Odeon that you can watch. Um, and there's a point where Brian May, the guitarist, does a solo in the middle, and he's got a really long echo on it. So I've got a delay set to a second and a quarter at the moment, about a second and a quarter. And what it does, it just doubles up the solo. It's like sort of playing with two guitarists. So that's a really good way of using an echo unit. So basically just plays a load of notes and lets the echo do all the work. <laughs> And I'll just show you the setting on screen. I've got my Sound Toys Echo. I've got it set on tube tape. I've got the delay time set at 12.75. And I've got the feedback set on about four or five repeats. And that gives you a nice long delay. But it's an interesting way of actually using a delay because it's like playing with a second guitarist. And it does sound very Brian May when you get the sort of notes harmonising with each other. It's just an interesting way of applying a delay. So that's one way of using an echo box. I'm going to demonstrate to you now a, a slapback echo. I'm going to start with the sort of 50s, 60s guitar sound. With that classic, again, a slapback delay, really short delay this time. I'm going to play you a major arpeggio just in A with single notes. I'm going to start with the echo off. And I'm going to put the slapback echo on. And my single note sounds like double notes now. As you can see, I've got the delay time set at 134 milliseconds. I've got the feedback set on zero, so I only get one repeat because obviously I need it really precise. So I only want one note coming back on the echo. And of course, you can set the actual delay time to match the tempo that you're playing at, so the notes come back doubled. So the slapback delay, again, you get that classic sort of 50s, 60s guitar sound going down. I'm going to demonstrate to you some examples of using echoes on vocals now. So a classic example of echo use on vocals back in the 1950s were things like Buddy Holly and Elvis Presley. Um, they used a really short echo, which is sometimes known as a slapback echo, and it just gives you that real authentic 50s, 60s sound. So I'll just sing a little line. 
Bibapalula, she's my baby. Bibapalula, don't mean maybe. Bibapalula, she's my, my baby doll, my baby doll. And you can hear that it sounds really good. So I'll just show you the setting. Slapback echoes happen between 80 and 120 milliseconds and you can see the feedback is turned right down to zero because you only literally want one repeat. So that's slapback echoes for you. Another example of using echoes on vocals, but a longer echo this time, like a good example of a track of using long delay is U2 in the name of love in the chorus where Bono puts the massive echo on and it just sounds great on those anthemic large ballads. So I'll just sing a line in now. In the name of love Once more In the name of love In the name of love Once more In the name of love And you can hear the big echo works really well on that sort of a thing. And the setting for that echo is 736 milliseconds. And I've got the feedback turned down. So it's got about three or four repeats. And also, sometimes on, on echo pedals, you find a modulation section with speed and depth. Now, when you add modulation after a delay, what it actually does, it speeds the delay up and then slows it down. As the modulation wave, it goes higher and then lower. So that's what a modulation does on a delay. So some echoes have modulation controls. Um, it's also very useful because you can get chorus sounds, phaser sounds and flanger sounds out of modulating echoes. Um, if you want to know more about this, watch my phasers, flangers and choruses videos uh, explained, part one and part two and part three. And this explains all the theory of modulation to you. And um, it is actually a really important thing to know about. So I'd highly recommend you watching these videos. So anyway, so the modulation control controls are probably the final controls that you'll find on a really comprehensive echo pedal. But you never get modulation controls on an analog echo. Like bands like ZZ Sputnik used it on the vocal on Shoot It Up. It's pretty crazy vocal sound but I'll demonstrate it to you now. Shoot it up, 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 shoot it up. Shoot it up, shoot it up. And I'll show you the setting for the effect. The delay time is set to 1002 milliseconds, which is basically a second. And the repeats, I've got it set the feedback at 10 o'clock, which is about five or six repeats. You can see I've got the modulation depth on full, 100. And I've got the rate set on very slow. So that's how you get that vocal effect. And it can also be used on drum sounds with sounds like this. Which is a sort of reggae dub effect. The delay time is set at 391 milliseconds. I've got the feedback again about five, six, seven repeats. I've got the depth set at eight out of 10 and the rate, the speed knob, I've got set just a little bit quicker than the uh, last vocal effect I demonstrated. So it's got its uses, but it's pretty extreme when you start putting modulation on echoes. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate some other uses of echoes, which is like in reggae and dub music, they use the echoes on the snare drum a lot. You can use it on the hats, on the snare drums, and it really adds to that rhythmic thing so echoes don't have to just be used as an effect they could be used as a rhythmic element okay then i've got a basic reggae pattern playing now i'm going to put a triplet echo on the hat so you can hear how it rhythmically improves the rhythm so that's a, a triplet a quarter triplet if i change it to a normal quarter note so on the quarter notes, it just doesn't sound as exciting. Triplet delays really adds to the rhythm.
Now on this snare drum, I've actually got one of the internal delays in Ableton. And what I've done, I've got one side half the speed of the other. And the left hand speaker is actually quicker. And the right hand speaker is slower, twice the speed. And that gives a similar effect as a ping pong echo. So let's put the hat back on as well. And there you get a typical sort of dub style drum beat. So delays can be used in a multitude of ways. So I hope that I haven't rambled on too much. There's been a lot of stuff to explain, a lot to get through. And I know it's quite a long video, but I hope all this information is of use to you and it gets you playing more guitar and using different delay sounds for different jobs in your production. So take care and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.